Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. Welcome to the uh, next Admirals uh, webinar, where we're here today to talk about uh, scalping US indices on the one minute chart. Quite a uh, quite a, a fascinating subject and, and a rather intense uh, trading style, but uh, that's what we'll talk about here. But listen, if you're joining us for the uh, first time, okay, that's uh, it's great for you to, to be here. Okay, if you are uh, watching this later on uh, YouTube on demand, then uh, by all means, you know, if, be sure to uh, be sure to sort of uh, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to uh, you know give us either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, increasingly on that as well. At the end of today's session, those of you joining us here uh, live on the uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, there'll be a survey sent to you after this uh, afternoon session. We'd really appreciate it by all means if you take a take a couple of moments just to fill that out for us. Give us uh, some feedback. Maybe have ideas on subjects you'd like to see us talk about in the future. That's absolutely fine. That's all great. We we appreciate all feedback. But as I said, here we are to talk about uh, scalping US indices on the one minute chart. Uh, it's going to be a rather interesting, uh, uh, interesting session. So uh, why don't we uh, crack on with it, ladies and gentlemen? Let's uh, let's dig into that. So uh, let's uh, let's switch across to the uh, to the slides and we'll also be looking at the live charts as well. Andrew and Carol say good afternoon. Great to see you here, guys. OK, fantastic to have um, everybody here. So just bear with us a moment. We'll just get this up and running for you. We'll be able to do it. Super. Here we go. Just always a little bit of technology there so let's just move myself into a better place so you can see the charts better um great to see you all here as i said i hope you can hear me i hope you can see me i hope you can uh, see the uh, the slides as well i'm going to talk about scalping us indices on the one minute chart so and, you know, those of you who join me uh, every week, you know, I always say that I appreciate that we have a global audience here and you are all very, very welcome from wherever you are, uh, from, you know, wherever you're joining us from. And I also appreciate that we have a, a broad range of people who are joining us here for our sessions. I, I recognise that some people are very experienced traders and there'll be some people here who are complete beginners. And so, and so you know, some of the slides will be there to help those new beginners um, sort of give them a, an educated introduction, but hopefully there'll be a, a few also additional little elements in there that the experienced traders in the room, you know, might just be able to take away and uh, take on board for their own uh, particular trading efforts. It would be great to hear what, if any, experience you have on scalping uh, the one minute uh, or scalping indices on one minute charts. I appreciate some people really love it, other people really sort of veer away from it um, and what i'll be able to do is give you a little bit of my uh, benefit of my own experience as well but it's great to hear what if any experiences you've had uh, yourself what have you found really good about it what have you found really challenging about it okay so by all means if you're doing that just stick it in the uh, chat box or if you're watching this later on demand well then basically put that in the commentary box on commentary box underneath uh, and we'll be sure to, to happy to help you uh, and give you a little bit of help and support so uh, Marie uh, said, Marie Louise, so says, you know, she's uh, welcome here. She's done a little bit of scalping as well. Uh, fantastic. It'd be great to hear what your own experience was, Louise, you know, how you, how that went for you. Um, as I said, but today is hoping to focus on a bit of an educated introduction into what is a, a rather, uh, rather, you know, it can be a rather challenging, okay, um, sort of a trading environment that requires you to be at the, uh, at, at your kind of best levels as a, uh, a trader. Octavian says he's had no experience yet, but he wants to lock it into diverse investments. OK, well, it's uh, hopefully this session is, is ideal for you. OK, I'll give you a little bit of a, a sort of a guided, educated introduction. And uh, Ishanka said, you know, he's here. Hi, you're very welcome. Um, uh, so Marie Louis said I did well, but I didn't have a strategy. So I felt I just got lucky. That's fantastic feedback. Really appreciate that. That's super. You know, what happens is, you know, as we'll come on to it, you'll realize because things are happening quite fast in a one minute chart. One of the good learning experiences for you is that it will expose um, the sort of gaps in your own knowledge uh, and experience. Uh, and Carol says, I use five minutes to find scalping setups, but I only do it on the DAX. That's that's absolutely uh, fine, Carol. You're very welcome here. Maybe there might be one or two things that here that help you, give you a little bit of uh, help and insight, and maybe even also uh, with your own uh, with your own trading on the DAX. So it's um, uh, great for you to, uh, to be here. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate the, the feedback. As I said, it always helps to hear what other people's experience has been like. So, uh, you know, here we are, Admirals, okay, a Forex and CFD broker that has a global presence with a local support, licensed and regulator across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products, and also allowing you to engage with markets, both MT4, MT5, and also the Admirals Supreme Edition. If you have any questions about uh, Admirals, 
please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. What you can also do is, you know, you can subscribe to the Admiral Telegram, okay, and that uh, you can see, as you can see there, at Admirals there, uh, you know, we're on Telegrams there, you can see my uh, colleague there, uh, Jens, looking uh, quite uh, smart and professional there, okay, in his uh, in his photos, uh, but the thing about Telegram is, you know, it's, it's quite a popular tool with uh, with traders, and also what it allowed to do is that effectively you'll get you'll get pinged when uh, where as and when admirals put out new uh, posts new uh, resources uh, new uh, sort of a new content for you there so by all means if you're uh, if you're using telegram be sure to uh, be sure to follow us on uh, the at admirals uh, handle there at, uh, at telegram Uh, and one other element that you can particularly look at is uh, uh, admirals have released Stereo Trader, and as the uh, as the sort of uh, as the slide says there, okay, Stereo Trader it's a it's a meta trader trading panel with unique functions that enable smoother, more controlled trades. Uh, it'll optimize your entries and exits with uh, fast and intelligent intelligent automation. That, ladies and gentlemen, could actually become very, very useful for those of you who choose to wish to uh, to do more scalping, okay, on one minute charts. So uh, my suggestion is that you know check out the uh, Stereo Trader tools on uh, the Admiral's uh, website, but also you will find that there should be a uh, uh, should be a video there in this sort of Admiral's YouTube uh, channel that would actually give you a little bit of insight into that. So I can commend you to take a little look at that. I'm not going to touch on it today. I want to just actually focus on almost like the kind of the pure element of the scalping but I can uh, definitely sort of recommend you go and take a look at Stereo Trader to, to help you with uh, if you look to do uh, more scalping. So, you know, what are we going to uh, talk about today? Well, uh, you know, as I said, you know, we've got a broad range of people in here. So, you know, we'll talk about for the complete beginners, well, you know, what actually is scalping? How is that different from other types of trade? We'll talk a little bit about, you know, how to focus on the right indices. Which ones are they? And we'll talk about, you know, what are the kind of things you need to be doing to be able to successfully scalp the US indices and how can we create just a very simple trading plan uh, for our own success. Uh, Mike here has joined us. Mike said that, you know, he had mixed results. He appreciate the, uh, the feedback. Uh, Alex said, I had a go at it, but I need help with the entry point indicators. And I also need to where to put the stop loss as I often get cut off. Um, that's a uh, great feedback, Alex. OK, great knowledge there, right? In terms of, you know, your own experience, that's uh, fabulous. So uh, what we'll do is we will touch upon a little bit of that. Easier when we switch across to the charts, but we will uh, definitely take a uh, definitely take a look at that. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Alex. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Paul. You know, I've traded for uh, for many years. Okay, M primarily, you know, I look to trade FX indices and commodities. And for longer term trading, I tend to be a trend trader. But for shorter intraday trading and also an element of my scalping, all right, I tend to look at reversals and mean reversion. Okay, that's what particularly works for me. And you know, and I'll share some elements of that today. It may not necessarily be for you. That's absolutely fine. Okay, what you find as you know, as traders, as you develop and evolve as a trader, is that it's about melding elements that work for you until you become, until you build your own particular trading style. So some people might like to trade reversals on intraday and scalping. Other people might like to try and trade trends. That's absolutely, absolutely fine. You know, there's, there's kind of, there's no perfection. You know, when you're trading intraday, especially when you're scalping, there's no perfection. All right, it is a case of you know doing what is best for you based upon your own particular trading experience, and we'll you know we'll touch on that a little bit as we go through our uh, session. So, ladies and gentlemen, scalping indices on the uh, on the one minute chart. So, uh, you know, as the slide says, trading U.S. indices on an intraday basis is an attractive proposition to to many traders because the volatility, the liquidity, and the big moves in indices can be you know can be fascinating to new traders and deemed to be open uh, all sorts of opportunities. However, you know, um, like we have shared in the past on webinars on intraday trading FX, it, it's important to be thoroughly prepared for the endeavor. And you know, and I, as we'll look at in a slide, you know, I, I would view scalping as a, you know, as a kind of an intense version of intraday trading. So it's, uh, as it says there, whether you're intraday trading FX indices, commodities, cryptocurrencies, you know, it is important to be thoroughly prepared for the endeavor, right? And uh, furthermore, as it says, when we look to move towards, you know, scalping US indices on one market chart, then we have to really be, you know, super focused and super, uh, super prepared in terms of how we look to uh, to operate. Uh, and today we'll provide a, a simple introduction to scalping US indices on the one minute chart, so you're prepared for what awaits. 
So, you know, as uh, a few of the people here who've joined us today have uh, have said so far, you know, some people have done it very well. Some people have had mixed results. Some people have found it a little bit confusing, you know, and it is a, uh, you know, it is a, it's a fascinating, you know, it's a fascinating environment. It's a fascinating area of study as well. And, uh, you know, what I can say from my own, you know, this is from my own personal trading experience, is that I found that there are times of the year uh, you know, where you can focus on on one asset class over the others, okay, whether that be FX, equities, indices, fixed income, or you know, or, or crypto. Sometimes it's quite clear, okay, where you should be focusing your particular efforts and endeavors. But other times, other times there's not. And I, um, you know, I wish I could give you just a very, very simple, you know, a simple rule of thumb, namely, I don't know trade indices in you know october and november and trade fx in april uh, unfortunately i don't have anything as, as simple as that but you know just from my own experience and from doing it for years you'll find that there are periods of uh, of, of the year where actually it's effectively it's, it's more you know it's more on an intraday basis it's you know it's, it's better returns for focusing your efforts and endeavors on let's say indices over uh, uh, fx or over you know particular other uh, uh, other particular asset classes so but with that in mind uh, let's have a look at the options regarding scalping US indices, because that's what we want to focus on here today. So, you know, when we're looking at scalping US indices, first, you know, as I appreciate, for those completely new traders joining us today, you want to have an understanding of, well, you know, what is scalping? Uh, I would define scalping as a as an intense version of intraday trading because it's involving making many small profit trades, but rather than a few large ones. It's a very short term style where trades may only last seconds or minutes uh, rather than days and hours. And because of that, it requires immense focus, dedication and quick responses and aligned with that. Your risk management principles and trading setups must be second nature. So, you know, we're, we're here, you know, in terms of scalping, okay, you know, whereas an intraday trader, some intraday traders may put a trade on at the start of the day and leave that to run throughout the whole day and then close it, only close it at the end of the session. In terms of their intraday trading, you know, they are not carrying a position overnight. Scalping on the other hand is, as I said, is kind of like a very intense version of, you know, intraday trading, where you might actually only be in a trade for a few seconds, for a few minutes, maybe an hour at, at, at most. You're looking to effectively, you know, just to trade quite aggressively, right? And if you're going to trade aggressively in markets, you, you know, you need to know your setups. You need to know what your risk management principles are, and you need to sort of have focus, dedication, and, and quick responses, good responses. And... The, the truth of the matter is that only comes from actually practice. Okay, that only comes from practice. It's um, that is not a God-given right that anyone uh, has in terms of um, in terms of trading. Okay, you know that is something that we all have to work at. You have to work at. You have to practice. Okay, and then slowly with time and experience and a, and a fantastic feedback debrief uh, principles and you know and, and procedures then that actually allows you to get um, allows you to get better and better. You know, even myself, um, when I uh, years ago, when I first my, my one of my own mentors um, got me to trade on the one minute charts, um, you know, I wasn't actually very good at trading on the one minute charts. And, and what I realized for myself when I had to do a lot of, um, you know, sort of introspection and reflection was that, you know, I had come I had come from being a, a, you know, a battle manager in the Air Force looking at radars, you know, radar, when you watch a radar, it updates every, my radars update every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, I was having to make a decision and having to actually, you know, act. I actually found one minute charts too slow for me, okay, from going from making decisions every 10 seconds to making every 60 seconds was actually very slow for me. And in that gap, I was being too aggressive, or I'd get out of trades too quick, okay, or I would just not read the market very well, because it was a new trader. And because, you know, trading on that, things were, you know, things happen quick, but maybe not as quick as I was expecting. And so, you know, I had to sort of pull back from that for a while. So, you know, if you're new to trading, okay, don't think that you're going to automatically just be some superstar trader. It is, it is, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's something that you know you're going to have to work at and practice at. If you want to, if you want to run at the uh, Olympics hundred meters sprints, okay, which is kind of in a way some like sprinting, uh, kind of like scalping, you know, you, that doesn't happen overnight. That happens, you know, you have to practice, okay, you have to practice and do all the right things to become the uh, the best trader you can be. 
Alex says, I know how you feel. I used to drive rally cars. OK, well, there you go. That's, uh, you know, in, in many ways, that's uh, that's very good, Alex. You know, and, and you know, it's, it's you, know, it, you know, this is a great kind of trading psychology point about it is that is that, you know, it, you know, I'm sure for you, Alex, you know, you had to practice lots and lots. OK, you don't you don't just automatically become you know, just a, a superstar rally car driver, okay, it's something you have to work at, okay, and things happen fast and you have to sort of learn it becomes a, like an automated response. And, and that is what scalping, uh, scalping markets is like as well. So uh, uh, that's interesting. Thanks for that, uh, Alex, that's a uh, fascinating uh, insight. So, <clears throat> you know, if we're gonna scalp, right, uh, part of it is being prepared rightly. And part of that is about having the right pre-market routine. You know, um, I did a I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago about on you know ensuring you have good routines and you know making sure you have the right uh, you know sort of first routines in place. If you didn't see that, it'll be on the YouTube channel. Be sure to go through it. But you know, if you're going to be trading, okay, as it says, you know, price action, which is what you know a lot of the work we'll be doing, okay, on sort of sharper in today levels. You know, it should be your trading plan should be very simple and clear, especially when scalping and, and intraday trading U.S. indices. So, you know, what I always say is, and you've heard me say this before, is whenever you open a chart, you make sure you identify significant levels in monthly, weekly, and daily charts. Some people might look at that and say, but Paul, I'm scalping a one minute chart. What do I care about what's on the, the monthly chart? And, it, and in an element, there is an element of, of truth in that. But this is part about having a routine. This is about identifying significant levels because it's at those significant levels or those significant zones that may be opportunity for you to scalp, you know, scalp a few ticks away. OK, so as I said, it's part about ensuring you have the right routine. You're doing the right thing. OK, day after day, session after session. We're going to be looking for particular price action triggers at, at such levels or at such areas. OK, and, you know, and you know what I always say is that, you know, especially with one minute, you know, I normally suggest, OK, when you're a new trader, all right, enter the trade on the break of the candle. Sometimes people get a little bit excited. They see a particular candle setting up and it hasn't completed. All right. And but they get excited and they, you know, they're into the trade quicker than they need to be. You never ever trade without a stop loss. If you're going to use price action, it should be the other side of the candle. Generally, I always say never risk more than one percent per trade. And actually, when it comes to scalping, I'd be saying, you know, you know, about a quarter of a percent, you know, right? a quarter of a percent or even less, you know, you know, to begin with just as small as you can until you actually get into this sort of idea. As always, I'm a big one for asymmetric reward to risk ratios. Sometimes that can be hard scalping. Sometimes it can be easy, depending on whether you catch the um, catch the move. As always, you'll hear me talk about keeping a good record of the trade because it's by keeping a good record of that trade and reviewing it that is how you get better session after session after session after session that's the way and you know once you're doing that well it is like literally a case of rinse and repeat just keep doing the good stuff every uh, every day ladies and gentlemen i like to split second decisions at 180 kilometers an hour you know yep you're absolutely right it's you know you know you have to train for that you know you have to train for that and and scalping is the uh, scalping is the same way alex So, you know, it's not only important that you have a pre-market routine, but you also have to ensure that you have the discipline to, to manage risk, all right? Risk management is absolutely key. Now, to be fair, you've heard me saying that, you know, for you know, however long we've been doing this, sort of 18 months of doing these uh, of these webinars, risk management is absolutely key. But the thing is, when you're doing intraday trading, then you're going down to scalping, things happen faster, all right? Things are going to happen faster. The markets will turn against you faster. The markets will run away from you faster. You know, and so when things like that happen, if you're not prepared or if you're not able to operate at that particular level, the opportunity arises for you to, to make mistakes and you're going to make mistakes. There will be what the traders call fat fingers mistakes. You know, you'll, you'll push buy instead of sell. You'll double your position size instead of it being smaller. You'll, you'll set the stop loss wrong. I assure you that will happen. And so what it becomes more important is that to have, you know, to understand your risk management, okay? You have to know what news is coming out for that session, right? And we'll have a little look at the moment because, you know, if you're an Admiral's client, then, you know, there's, there's you know, plenty of um, great resources for uh, Admiral's clients that will give you things like well, giving you an update on what the news is coming out. What I also suggest is you conduct your analysis before trading, right? Especially when we're doing this US indices, okay? Take a bit of time to have a look at it before those US indices start to sort of maneuver. And we'll, 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 we'll touch on that a little bit more. Resist the temptation to trade out session. Now, you know, that will that change. We're going to I'm going to talk more about that specifically in a slide or two. 
But if you're going to trade US indices, okay, trade US indices when the vast majority of the, the, the traders are, are working there, trying to trade US indices on scalping over, let's say, the Asian session, okay, over what would be overnight for me here in the UK, you know, it's kind of, you kind of, you know, you're making a rod for your own back there, ladies and gentlemen. As always, ensure you have a good internet connection and ensure you're rested and prepared for the session. You know, if you've, you know, if you've not slept well, okay, if you've been, you know, you know, if you've been arguing with your partner or you know, you know, you're just a little bit grumpy because your football team lost at the weekend, all right, you know, all of these things will have an element, okay. So just ensure you're rested and prepared for the session. It's it's on you to to, to give yourself the best opportunity to trade well. So um, I think earlier in the year. I did a uh, I did a, a webinar which was all about uh, risk management for intraday trading. Now that will be in the Admiral's YouTube clinic, so uh, YouTube uh, uh, channel. So be sure to go back and go through that because it will help you. But you know one of the elements of it, okay, which I'm just going to repeat here, which was linked to the um, linked to the session that uh, we did there. You know, one of those rule number three was to know your numbers, all right. And uh, what does that actually mean when it comes to risk management? It just knows your position sizing for the day, the week, the month, all right. And for intraday trading, you know, when you're doing, especially scalping, I suggest static position sizing rather than dynamic position sizing. What does that mean? Well, you know, static position size means that, you know, you have a particular uh, particular sort of capital risk in mind, which you operate for that week, I would suggest, for uh, intraday trading, as opposed to dynamic is effectively, you know, you are dynamically looking to sort of risk, you know, X amount, okay, X percent, what have you. And that can change based upon, based upon your, uh, based upon your equity curve. Whereas because things are happening fast, okay, because things are, you know, it's like, like you know, as uh, fighter pilots would say, it's like a knife fight in a phone box, all right, okay, things are happening very fast and aggressively. It is a case of, you know, I suggest you keep it, keep it simple, just know your numbers, have static position sizing, you know, and, and to, to do that, you can also help yourself by creating a very simple position sizing matrix, all right, doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be um, super complicated, just you can have just a very simple little position sizing matrix that you know for me has elements of you know uh, you know how much based upon you know um, my risk. If you want to understand more about the risk, my uh, uh, my colleague Jens did a webinar a while back on the Kelly criterion and how to use that for position sizing. Once again, that is in the YouTube channel. Be sure to take a look at that. As I was saying, you know, really, if you're operating, I'd be saying you know, for scalping, you're really looking around about you know quarter of a percent okay i know people who trade even less than that and that's absolutely fine you know that's how what works, works for me you might actually even want to trade 0.1 percent okay to begin with that is absolutely that is absolutely fine but with a position sizing matrix you start to work out okay what effectively you're uh, able to to risk so that you know as you're focusing on the trade it becomes a little bit quicker and easier to understand you know where, where stops what kind of risk you're likely to to have in play <laughs> it becomes very important uh, what I will also say is, you know, during a very fast moving market, you, you will, it will be unlikely that you will achieve absolute perfection, okay, in your risk management, which is why actually understanding beforehand will, will help you and will help you if you do make a mistake, will help you recognize far faster that you've made one, and then you can actually, you know, take the necessary action. So before we actually have a quick look now at these uh, indices, is that what has normally particularly happened is that, you know, here, certainly here in the UK, and you know, I'd suggest Western Europe as well, is that indices traders, they usually focused on trading two specific sessions. Um, they would trade basically euro indices in the morning. So effectively focusing on mostly the DAX, but also perhaps uh, FTSE, and then maybe looking at some of the others like the, uh, the, the, the MIB or the CAC, okay, or the IBEX, et cetera. And then focusing on US indices in the afternoon. So you will find that many traders will trade DAX in the morning and the Dow S&P in the afternoon. Um, however, I would also suggest that that is changing. I said earlier about not trading out of session. But, uh, you know, what uh, we have noticed and what, you know, some of my own clients have noticed is that actually, you know, they have started to trade U.S. indices in the early morning of what would be the European session. There have been some particular opportunities there. So I think that is just effectively a, uh, um, a reflection of, what we've seen in the last year, where invariably those US indices have been on a tear, they are they are moving to, you know, even as we speak, moving to have been moving to all time highs over the last few days. And that that sort of increases, you know, that increases focus. OK, that increases you know, liquidity, volatility, etc. 
uh, and that it attracts more traders in. But generally, what we're going to focus on is basically US indices in the in the afternoon session. What will be the afternoon session for us here in the UK and uh, Western Europe? But will be the opening right, of the actual US session itself. So, you know, if, if you're completely new. In terms of scalping US indices on one minute chart, you know, you've got to be aware, really you're actually looking at, there are four particular main US indices, the, the Dow 30, okay, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and what would be the Russell 2000. Um, what we're going to focus on, okay, here is we're going to focus on the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ in particular. That's what we we'll look at, and we're going to look at that in the charts in, uh, in a moment. And you know what? What I've always, um, what I've always particularly uh, said is that you know one of the ways we can have a, a bit of an edge, okay, as private traders, is I believe, and you know this is my view. Others may differ. Is that as we see the increasing use of algos across both, um, you know, across all markets, okay, equity markets, indexes, FX markets. We know what we see is, especially, and I noticed this with the U.S. indices, is that they can be increasingly correlated. And so what I, I like to do and what I like to see is that, you know, I like to use those when I see that correlation from the algos, I like to use that to our own benefit, especially in those US indices. OK, so very often you will see markets will move um, together. Let's bring up the old quick drawing tool here. Let's just whilst we're here. Um, so here I've got, you know, this is actually a 30 minute chart of the uh, the Dow. There's the Nasdaq. OK, and there's the S&P 500, 30 minute charts. Uh, and actually what you'll see here is. As we come out of this grey box, which is the uh, Asian and European session, you know the mark the Dow goes up before it drops, before it goes up. And, you know the Nasdaq does the same; it rallies, okay, then it drops and then it pulls back a bit. As does the S and P; it rises, it drops, and it pulls back. So hopefully you can see that. And here I have a kind of a, a Treasury notes, which uh, tend to do the opposite, okay, which we use. But I'm not going to go into them too much today. But the important thing is, is that, you know, I am happier when I see that those when I see those US indices are sort of just ticking along together and correlated. That actually makes me that makes me happier. OK, they, you know that I am uh, I'm much happier when to uh, to sort of engage in those markets because I recognize that probably the algos are moving them and I'm, I'm not going to fight that. OK, I'm not going to fight that. I'm actually going to try and surf that. I'm actually going to try and work with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. With that in mind, okay, that's one of the first things I'm looking for. Okay, is that you know to see if you know is there a is there a nice kind of correlation? Are they working all together? And then I'm just kind of look to use um, my existing tool set. I don't really particularly have anything specifically that I use for scalping. And what I like to do is you know I just like to use what I use in all my other versions of trading because I find that I'm able to recognize those patterns much much faster. And you know, because you know because I'm used to trading and I've been trading them for years. So what do I like when it comes to uh, uh, indices in particular? I, I like to use you know previous highs and lows, but whether it be the previous days highs and lows, previous weeks highs and lows, or you could even have your know, previous months highs and lows as well. I find that that, and the reason I like them is because there are orders there. There are a point at where a market may have to make a decision, and if I want to scalp, that is actually a, a good place for me to be able to scalp with. What I also look for is I like to see double tops and bottoms. That's you know that's something that I've uh, I trade across all time frames. I you know I like to they work for me, and in particular some price action setups and and, and combinations of setups. So. Uh, key reversal candles okay I, I particularly like engulfing candles pin bars star formations if you want to know more about them i've done videos and webinars on them. they are all in the channel okay so be sure to, to have a little look at that okay go back and uh, take a take a little bit of a look at them so you know um as i was saying here what i'm always looking for and what i'm always interested in is you know i have to start okay i suggest to start at the kind of you know the sort of uh, the daily and then start to move down okay from sort of the 60 minute and the 30 minute to get an idea okay and what i'm looking for is just as i said just to try and identify when those markets are happily moving in unison okay when they're happily correlated that's what um that's what kind of makes uh gives me a uh, uh puts me in a puts me in a happier place because i'm i'm kind of understanding you know what is going on i'm just trying to i'm not i'm trying to i'm trying to ride the flow okay i'm not trying to basically uh, uh be a rock star okay and do my own thing 
and you know here there you know as i said it's just another example you can see there okay the correlation there between those three major us indices they've all been moving together nicely that you know that is that is my kind of first tick in the box where i'm like okay well i'm happy to operate in this market here um, you know, as opposed to other areas where uh, where there might not be so, um, you know, this is a this is a slide here, and, and once again, these are this is you know, it's a fifteen minute chart, but it's it's here just to give you an indication of you know what you may see. Okay, is that you know, um, look at the in this case, look at the lack of correlation. So the Dow here, okay, the Dow has actually sort of you know has been going down into a double bottom, whilst the the Nasdaq has uh, has broken. Okay, it's a uh, broken its uh, uh, early morning, early day uh, highs, okay, and it's been rising, uh, whilst the S&P has, has basically been going sideways. So when I see them like this, okay, you know, when I see them, you know, all going in different directions, uh, my view is that, you know, there's, there's, there's something afoot, there is some, you know, there's a transition of some sort going on, and actually what we're looking to, to see is when, when it's operating like that, I become, um, you know, I become a bit nervous of trading if there is a fantastic setup, I will look to, to trade it, but invariably I will only I will uh, dial down my risk. But actually, most of the time when I see markets like this, um, I actually just leave and go away and do something else. So I, that's not you know because uh, you know as I said, I, I don't understand what's going on there. Okay, and so actually I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to swim in shark infested waters. You know, call me call me old fashioned. That is just not my idea of a good time. Okay, so when I when I'm not seeing that kind of correlation on that kind of 60, 30, 15, and even down shorter. You know that I'm starting to step back and say, well, actually, hang on a minute, just just wait, just just give it, and it, you know, and it might be that the session starts over like that, but actually it becomes correlated later on as maybe news comes out into the market. That is that is entirely possible. But when I see markets like that, okay, I just uh, generally step back, and 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 that's what I would you know suggest most people do as well. So. Uh, what I also have is a few simple rules, and this is what I would suggest, okay, for you to, to, to take away, is that, you know, US markets open between like 09.30 and, and 1600, 4 p.m., okay, uh, New York time. What that usually means here in the UK, although it will change, um, it will, there'll be a slight shift, okay, over the next couple of weeks as we go from British summertime, okay, uh, to, uh, to, to change from that, is that it, usually in the UK, what that means is that we are having, we'll see the 0930 opening will be here at 14.30, at 2.30 in the afternoon here. Uh, and what I suggest to new traders, okay, and new traders is that you give the first 30 minutes of the US sessions a miss, okay? By all means, you should be there watching them, but don't try to trade them. If you have a bit of experience, I'd say, you know, you might get away with a sort of 15 to 20 minutes of window, but for new traders, I'd say, you know, give the first 30 minutes of message, okay? Just sit and watch. Certainly, normally, what you'll find is the first 10 to 20 minutes can be quite uh, quite volatile, all right? Because, you know, the, the markets are opening, there's orders coming in, there's overnight orders getting filled, etc. People are just sort of readjusting their positions, so it can be immensely volatile. That is not that is not a period for you to be trading in, all right? That is a period for you to just sit and watch, see how the market is making its mind, seeing if there are correlations in play, and then get ready to move. And you know, I normally suggest you know get ready to move from just you know from about three o'clock UK time onwards, okay? Which you know which would be sort of 10, 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. US time. And you, I'm sure wherever you are joining us here in the world, you can reflect that to your to your own local times. And on the flip side, I would normally suggest for new traders is that you give the last 30 minutes of the session a miss as well, because what you'll have is there'll be you know lots of intraday traders who've had positions on all day, and they will effectively be looking to either close their position, okay, and that can mean uh, an element of uh, volatility in that last 30 minutes. Sometimes that volatility is is, is tradable. But if you're a new trader, my suggestion is, okay, give the first 30 minutes a miss, give the last 30 minutes a miss. It's not to say you can't sit and watch and see how the price develops, but as a general rule, okay, you know, and this is supposed to be about giving you a little bit of an int educated introduction, don't basically, don't try and trade those, those particular moments. So um, what I suggest is that you pick windows, okay? It, you, you cannot scalp one minute charts all day. Well, that's wrong. You can, but the likelihood of you doing it well is is not very good at all. All right, the likelihood of you doing it is yeah, is very poor, because actually you're you know I assure you you know when you're doing it you'll be sat there on the edge of your seat okay and you will fatigue very very quickly. You think you won't. You'll think you know, Paul, I'm young, I'm smart, I'm super fit, etc. And all of those things help enormously. But I can assure you, okay, trying to scalp right one minute charts, okay, you you cannot do it 
all day, right? The, generally, the human body kind of, you know, it, it can perform well for about 45 minutes, right? Okay, as a, as a, as a general rule. And remember, trading is a, it's a performance, it's a performance environment, okay? It's not an industrial age game where you turn up, okay, like an industrial age job, work, you know, nine to five, 40 hours a week, okay? It doesn't work like that. Trading is a performance activity. So I think it's more about picking windows where you might actually be able to sort of, you know, to, to, to trade well, okay? You know, and remember, you're here, you're, you're looking for a few trades to give you a few ticks. You're not, you know, you're look, not looking for home runs. So maybe you have a window where you say to yourself, all right, you know, I will sit and watch the open, okay? And then I will actively trade from maybe what would, for me, would be like from three o'clock to four o'clock, or maybe, you know, five o'clock to six o'clock, or, you know, sometimes six o'clock to seven, or, you know, seven till eight o'clock, okay, which is, these are all UK timings, all right, but that would be, you know, after that, then you're into the last hour of the year uh, of the US uh, particular session. So, you know, it doesn't have to be those particular times, what it's more about is, you know, just pick a couple of windows that work for you, all right, you know, maybe it's your lifestyle, maybe you just see the way the market moves better in those times, but just particularly um, focus on that. So um, we're gonna let's gonna move across to the uh, let's move across to the charts, all right? But um, uh, you know, as always, okay. A couple of final points. So what I suggest, and I'll show you, is that you build a profile for US indices on your MT4 or MT5 platform, and just watch how those markets react on that intraday basis. As we switch across the chart, I'll describe how my charts are set up there. Remember what I was talking about correlations there. You know, are they moving in unison? All right. Or are they moving separately? If they are, just maybe take, take a step back. How does price react at previous highs and lows? OK, they start to be very interesting points for a scalper. Did it create an opportunity? And as it says that there is no perfection in scalping. So, so do not aim for that. You certainly, you know, as I said, you want to know your setups. You want to know your risk management principles. You want to understand what news is coming out that session. OK, you want to understand the particular levels you can see on your charts. But there is no perfection. OK, things can happen fast. Things can turn on you fast and you have to be able to adapt to that session. And the way that happens is is through a little bit of experience. OK, you know, and you know, this is why you have fantastic access to uh, Admiral's demo uh, platforms to begin, just to make sure you can understand your uh, understand how you uh, um, understand how you trade. And then with a bit of time and, you know, a bit of time and focus and a little bit of practice, you will start to be able to sort of just identify and see what is uh, what is particularly going on. So we're going to move to the charts, OK, because I think we can finish the slides and let's move to the charts. And some of those things we've talked about will start to play and then I'll layer up, OK, as we as we look at the, the charts themselves. Yeah, US indices are an exciting asset class to trade. But as I've always said, it's important to be thoroughly prepared and be aware of those upcoming news items. If there is a strong correlation, great. If there isn't, then my suggestion for new traders is to avoid it. What you might even see is, is one index in charge. Is that actually leading the, the session? Could be because of the news, could be because of what's going on. If that happens and you can see that, well, then follow that for the session. Are there any particular static uh, or dynamic levels of support or resistance in play? In which case, follow them, OK? You know, big round numbers, all-time highs, which is what we've been hitting on indices, OK? Previous days, highs and lows, previous weeks, highs and lows, previous months, highs and lows, previous levels of support and resistance. They will all be areas where markets have to make a decision that provides opportunity. Manage risk, right? And this is crucial when scalping, okay? And, and if, you're, if you're not sure whether to, you know, what, what your risk is, always risk down, okay? Always risk down. Know your setups as well, right? You need to be able to trade them well, all right? So, you know, it might actually be, and you may only have two setups, okay, that, that work for you. And that's absolutely fine because you're trading, you know, one minute charts, you know, you might get a couple of, you might get, you know, one or two uh, opportunities in, a, in your, let's say your hour window. And that's great. That's actually that actually works, that works well for you, okay? That's that's all you need. You're not looking to try and trade everything because you can't. So before we switch the charts, don't forget to join my uh, colleagues, Jens, okay? Okay, we're gonna learn about, uh, he's talking on Friday about trading psychology, about how cognitive biases negatively affect your trading uh, performance. Uh, and he'll talk about Dunning-Kruger effect, okay? The zone and what your personal trading routine look like, all which, will build upon you know what we're taught today so that's uh, two o'clock london time friday 29th of october check your inbox for the webinar link uh, you know or head over to the uh, head over to the website 
Uh, and as always, you can contact Admiral Markets, okay? If you've got questions, if you've got thoughts, comments, okay, you can email us there at global at admiralmarkets.com. You can see us there and we'll be very happy to, uh, to hear your uh, thoughts. I remember what I said at the end of the session, after we've moved to the charts, um, we'll, you know, we'll be conducting a survey. Please be great. You'll get that sent through to you. Please sort of keep a, yeah, an eye out for that. And if you can fill that in, if you've got thoughts, ideas, that would be fantastic. You know, we'd, uh, we'd, uh, we'd, you know, we'd admire to hear that. So um, bear with me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to switch across to the charts because that will start to help us give a little bit more uh, insight, okay? a bit more building on, on what we just talked about there in the slide. So just to... Uh, just bear with us a moment. We'll uh, we'll make that uh, we shall make that happen. He says, "Okay, so let's bring up my uh, excellent, excellent." So, oof, excellent. So uh, here we can see that uh, there is uh, um, my uh, slide. So um, before, in fact, before I show you that, I'm going to just basically just to give you a little bit of help here. Hopefully, is um, should have is. Great. So just before I see it, hopefully you can see this. This is uh, insight into the premium analytics that uh, Admiral clients uh, have access to. Uh, here you can see on the left, you know, selecting the onto indices, looking at the uh, the Dow Jones. The important thing for us is uh, understanding you know, what, if any, news is coming up before the session. So I've already checked this and done this, but, you know, in your Wednesday afternoons, okay, you know, it's normally the uh, uh, it's the weekly oil numbers, okay, that can have a little impact depending upon the, the names. But other than that, there's no other massive major, um, uh, you know, formal news coming out. Um, but also you have the opportunity to see the kind of the, the news feed here, okay, of, of running through. We're in earnings season here, so there will be interesting, you know, as we as, as comments and thoughts come out about, um, you know, uh, earnings that were released either last night or et cetera, ones that are expecting tonight after the session ends, they will come through and, and uh, you know, that will have an impact there. But for what we're looking at here, you know, that is the premium analytics page. Make sure you can use that to make sure you know that um, that you know you know exactly what kind of major news is coming out to uh, to uh, that might have an impact, okay, upon your particular markets. So there is that always that to have a look at. I'm just going to move this over here. Hopefully that'll make it just a little bit easier. So what we're looking at here is this is a profile that I've set up. Okay, hopefully you can just uh, see at the uh, at the bottom. You know, it's just my U.S. indices intraday profile, right? And I've just got, as I said, I've got those four charts on here that basically I've got you know the Dow Jones, okay, the S and P five hundred, and the uh, and the Nasdaq, okay, uh, and we've got the thirty minute charts here, and we're just looking as the the market opens, and we'll pick on one and have a look at. But immediately, hopefully, you can see, you know, after you know, after last night where you know yesterday's session, the price popped and then dropped. Okay, hopefully you can see that. What we're already seeing here, okay, as we're entering, is that the the Dow and the S and P, okay, are, are clearly having a bit of a yeah, a bit of a yeah, a bit of a sort of opening up to the downside. Whereas actually, you can see, all right, the Nasdaq is opening up. Okay, so there's there isn't correlation there. Not not an entirely shocker. Because um, you know, we're as I said, we're in earnings season. A lot of the big tech companies who are on the Nasdaq are uh, are releasing, so not a real shock. But um, let's have a let's have a little look at that in uh, in more depth and see what's been going on. So um, let's get here. Okay, do, do, do. let's have a little look at what the Nasdaq is doing here. Or maybe you know, maybe it'd be more interesting to see the S and P because it's clearly building. So if we go down to you know what I look at here for just thirty minute chart, what I have here. Is hopefully you can see on my uh, charts here. Uh, if I just bring up the indicators list, I have a uh, d -d 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 I have a tool here called I Sessions, uh, and what I do is that basically you can utilize that to basically color up or color down um, particular time zones. So what I have on my US indices intraday is you know effectively you know I just gray out what is effectively the majority of the Asian session and the European session, and it runs until the start of the US session. There. Why do I do that? Why am I interested in that? It's so that you know I can just look at very quickly. I can get an idea of you know what has price done in the uh, uh, in the Asian the European session, uh, and what is it done you know in the US session. So I can see very here we go. I can see very quickly and clearly for myself that yes, is this bear with me a second? Is that bang. is that here? You know on the twenty uh, second price actually it broke out of that sort of uh, overnight in European session, broke out of it, and then it mean reversed all the way down, broke out the other side of it, and what did it do? Mean reversed all the way back in. 
this day on uh, on I think that was Monday. Yeah, Monday was a uh, Monday was a trending day. You can see that actually based on the price broke out, it went. Yesterday was a, you know, another kind of a mean reversion day. It broke out of that block and then it came back down. I just have some simple moving averages on, and hopefully you can also see that you know I have uh, an indicator to just that just reminds me of what the previous day and the weeks high and low on that can be enormously helpful for me. As I said, I want to identify those particular areas. So let's go down and see what's, uh, what's been going on here. Excellent, so 15 minutes and go down to the five minute chart and uh, and then go into the one minute chart. Now, remember what I was saying, okay? Remember what I was saying is that, you know, we're doing this here and it's, it's you know, it's 2.44, okay, in the UK. Remember what I was saying is, you know, it's 9.30 in the US, the, uh, the markets are opening, okay? And, and here you can see, it's it's uh, it's actually not as badly volatile as it can be, but you can see there's definitely some swings there. And, and what do you know? Here, you know, it, it's come down to yesterday's low uh, and actually bounced off there. So that's that's uh, that's good for us to uh, that's good for us to know. But you know, what I'd be doing here is just effectively let's just zoom out there a little bit. It's just basically watching that, okay, watching that for the next five to five to fifteen minutes. Up until sort of you know uh, for the first you know I said missed the first twenty to thirty minutes of the U.S. session, let it get all of its uh, its madness out of its way, uh, and then be ready to to look. At the moment, it's trading still within the range, okay, still within the range of the uh, of the uh, European and Asian session, still in there, okay. But it's it's noticeable to me that we can see that every time it's come down to yesterday's low, see how it's uh, bounced off there during uh, earlier in the uh, uh, earlier in the uh, sort of uh, day. And also, also here now, and how that's uh, how that's particularly how that's particularly moving. So, just uh, keep an eye uh, keep an eye on that. Um, so that's the S and P. Let's have a little look at the Dow once again. I'm just getting ready to go down here. One minute, and uh, you know what can we see here is that you know we we dropped our way down, but actually, what do we know? We bounced off here. We have bounced. See how we've had? You know, there's a. Uh, Pin bars there, we have bounced off the low of K of the overnight European Asian session, which is also around yesterday's low and previous week's high. Okay, so I think we're a bit, I think we're a bit jammed in here. It wouldn't surprise me maybe if we you know kind of drifted back down to make a double bottom. That could be a double bottom that could be ready to trade. Okay, in about 15 minutes' time. Okay, when you know, as I said, I missed the first first half an hour out for, for new traders and let, let the market just be a little bit mad. Today it's not as bad, but some days you can see that it's actually quite um. Some days it is actually quite, uh, um, yeah, very difficult to understand. I wonder if there's, uh, I wonder if there's an example of that right here that we can look at very quickly um, from the uh, previous session. So um, I think I've just blocked it where well. oh, not completely mad up there. So yeah, so here, you know, actually here's a good example. So it's um, from yesterday. So actually, what you can see there, you know, that is. Let's talk. You can see that that is primarily the kind of the first sort of half an hour of the uh, trading session of the Dow Jones. You can see how that basically was just it was very scrappy for that first 20, 30 minutes. So so give it a miss. All right. Don't don't try and fight that. Let it pop out. Where did it go? It went to the high of the European Asian session. And then what did it do? It put in a double top false breakout before it dropped down. OK, and that was the trade that actually is a kind of a head, inverse head and shoulders, which is actually a very useful one minute tool as well. And then you can see it actually just let's clear off here and basically it just moved its way there okay through the rest of the session and what you're particularly looking at is you know what i was saying is that you know previous highs previous highs and lows okay where price starts to make a, a reflection or a reverses that's the way it can go and when you get a trend there is an opportunity to to move with that let's just bring this here is that and then we actually trade away all the way down sort of around this kind of uh, here into what was basically the end of the double bottom, which is a kind of a triple bottom, head and inverse head and shoulders before price sort of ran away um, again there. So as I said, don't trade the first half hour, okay? Wait to see, you know, how price reacts at, you know, the the, the sort of the uh, overnight sort of kind of uh, Asian and European sessions, previous days, highs and lows, previous previous weeks, highs and lows. Look at the kind of the price action that plays at those points where it needs to make a decision. So where it puts in things like head and shoulders patterns, uh, double tops, double bottoms, all right, uh, pin bars, engulfing candles, key reversal candles. Those elements at those particular areas start to become opportunities for you to take uh, to take a trade. And that is actually where you'd be looking to sort of, you know, do your best as uh, scalping these uh, US indices. 
So um, appreciate. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I was hoping to you know cover more, but uh, time is always against us. But I hope you know if you're new, okay, to you know trading and new to scalping, that that has just given you a little bit of a insight into how you can start to prep yourself for it and what you're actually particularly looking to uh, to achieve. It's not something you have to leap in with both feet, okay? You can take a little bit of time, all right? Just to watch, watch the first half hour, okay, of the US session. Just watch and see how the market reacts and then actually see how that plays and how market moves, okay, to those particular, those particular areas, okay, where it might actually reverse off. And then just look at the price action, see how it plays out there, okay, and whether that gives you a, uh, an opportunity there. So um, as always, uh, remember I said there's a you know there's a survey coming up after this session. It'd be great to hear what your thoughts or even just ideas for future sessions. We always love to uh, to, to hear them. Uh, and until the next time, it just uh, just remains for me to say that I wish you the best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you have a great trading week, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Many thanks. Trade well.